Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for your kind introduction. Uh, thank you for the for the invitation. It's, uh, it's a great pleasure to deliver this um, this seminar. Um, probably you guess uh, from my my name. I I'm from Portugal, um, and um, I I started my career a long time ago after I finished my my graduation, my first uh, my, my my licenciatura in mechanical engineering. Um, I started my career at uh, the Polytechnic Institute of uh, of Leiria where um, more than 20 years ago, we started a, an FCT center, uh, the Center for Rapid and Sustainable Product Development, where we start some preliminary studies um, focusing on uh, the use of um, additive manufacturing for building and construction um, with my wife, she is a civil engineering. And uh, on that time, uh, an MSc student, uh, uh, later a PhD student, Flavio Perveiro, which is now a, a faculty member at the, at the Polytechnic uh, Institute of, uh, of Liria. In 2014, I moved to uh, the University of Manchester. The challenge was, uh, was different, was to uh, create uh, a lab uh, focusing on the use of uh, additive for uh, biomedical applications. And um, I became also the academic lead for Industry 4.0. And uh, uh, last year in, um, in um, uh, August, I moved to uh, NTU, to Nanyang Technological University, um, to be the executive director of the Singapore Center for 3D Printing. So additive manufacturing is always present in my, in my career. It's the, it's the, the, the brick uh, and uh, my key uh, uh, technology. Well, you know that uh, 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 academics, they, they like to do uh, marketing. Uh, so we have always one slide to do marketing. And uh, for those who, who don't know, um, NTU is, uh, is a relatively young uh, uh, university. Uh, it was established at the same time as the Polytechnic Institute of Liria when I started my career, but it's growing very, very, very fast. Uh, it is uh, currently the best university in the world under uh, 50 years. Um, the number one university in material science and, uh, and nanotechnology, and uh, uh, the fifth best university in mechanical engineering, only behind uh, uh, MIT, uh, Stanford, uh, Harvard, and, uh, and Cambridge. Uh, at NTU, um, I'm the uh, executive director of the uh, Singapore Center for 3D Printing. This is a a research center that was uh, established in 2014, uh, funded by the, the National Research Foundation and supported by NTU and by the Economic Development Board. And we have uh, um, strong partnerships with um, uh, multiple um, industries. Uh, in some cases, uh, uh, those companies uh, um, created also uh, joint research labs within the center, in the center. Uh, the, our research is organized uh, uh, around uh, right now seven pillars. Um, I only have uh, here six uh, because the seventh was something that I decided to, to, to start uh, um, since I joined the, 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 the center. All of these uh, research pillars are aligned with uh, industrial sectors, sectors of relevance to uh, Singapore. And those uh, uh, research pillars are aerospace and defense, building and construction, marine and offshore, uh, future manufacturing, which is about industry for smart manufacturing. So the integration of additive manufacturing with uh, other uh, digital uh, technologies, digital tools, uh, such as artificial intelligence, uh, big data. Um, biomedical and food, which we are rebranding as uh, bio uh, manufacturing, uh, electronics, and uh, the seventh uh, uh, research pillar, which is related to design for uh, additive uh, uh, manufacturing. The center has uh, um, 40 faculty members, um, 33 full-time researchers, so postdoc uh, uh, research fellows, and uh, more than um, uh, 45 um, um, PhD students. And, uh, in the, last, uh, in the last few years, we uh, invested uh, more than uh, 20 million Singapore dollars, which is probably equivalent to uh, 12 million euros in um, uh, buying state-of-the-art machines. So right now we have uh, um, all commercial available uh, 3D printing uh, uh, techniques uh, at, um, 
at the center. Uh, these slides uh, show some of the, the, the production 3D printing machines. So we have uh, a couple of uh, metal laser powder bed fusion uh, uh, machines. Uh, we have also uh, EBM machines, also for metals, uh, uh, two direct energy deposition machines to create large uh, metallic parts, um, hybrid systems, um, uh, plastic uh, powder bed fusion machines, also two uh, 3D printing systems to print uh, electronics. And then of course we have uh, a range of uh, uh, food printers, uh, bio printers, uh, vet photopolymerization systems, extrusion machines, and uh, for um, uh, building and construction, we are using uh, a large uh, cooker robot. And by the end of this, uh, of this year, we will have uh, a big uh, gantry system that will allow us to create uh, or to print uh, parts uh, over a, a, a printing area uh, with uh, 7.5 per five per three uh, meters um, and uh, um, max, uh, uh, printing uh, uh, capacity of uh, 20, 20 tons. So this, these machines allow us to print uh, almost uh, all types of, uh, of materials. I mentioned concrete, uh, but metals, polymers, ceramics, uh, composite materials, uh, uh, biomedical materials, biological materials, including, uh, including, uh, including cells, and uh, uh, also uh, smart materials. So materials that uh, can sense uh, changes in the environment and uh, responds to those changes by changing uh, shape uh, or color in response to temperature changes, humidity, electricity, pH, uh, and so on. Um, the video that I'm going to show you uh, represents a 3D printed uh, a butterfly using uh, shape memory materials. And as you can see, the wings are uh, changing the shape uh, in response to changes in the um, environmental conditions, in this case, responding to uh, humidity uh, uh, changes. Um, the next video shows uh, a gripper in, uh, in, uh, in action uh, without supplying any electrical current, only by using the shape changing effect. Um, and, and again, this was uh, 3D printed uh, using uh, uh, shape memory uh, polymers. These materials are quite relevant for uh, construction applications, and uh, we are starting a, a new program investigating these materials, for example, for the fabrication of uh, smart facades. Um, the next video um, briefly summarize, uh, summarize the, the, the center, um, our pillars, and uh, uh, gives you also a, a, an idea about uh, the research collaborations that, uh, that we have in the, and the links with, uh, with industry. Oh, o vídeo não tem som, pois não? Tem, não está a passar. Não, isso não está. Not... Consegue ouvir agora? Não, sim. Yes. So as, uh, as I mentioned, our research activities are organized according to um, pillars uh, related to um, industrial sectors relevant to Singapore. And of course, uh, construction is one of those, uh, those pillars. Uh, construction is uh, uh, important in Portugal. It's um, critical in, uh, in Europe, uh, significantly contributing to the GDP and uh, to create uh, uh, new jobs. In, uh, in Singapore, 
the construction sector um, represented or contributed in 2020 to almost uh, 3% to our national uh, GDP and uh, uh, generated more than uh, 400,000 uh, uh, jobs. Um, by late uh, 2020 and uh, mid uh, 2021, we observe uh, um, uh, a slight decline on the activities um, um, around uh, construction due to uh, COVID-19, but uh, uh, things are changing. Um, and uh, currently there are uh, more than uh, 70,000 uh, residential units under construction, which shows the dynamic uh, and uh, uh, how active is, uh, is the, the sector and uh, the fast recovery of the sector here in, uh, in Singapore. Well, contrary to um, other industrial sectors, um, and a good example is, uh, is uh, uh, manufacturing, uh, where uh, the use of um, uh, digital uh, technologies and this digital transformation uh, that we call as Industry 4.0 allow to significantly improve productivity, uh, this does not happen in the construction sector. And in fact, uh, we observe a decline in terms of, uh, of productivity. The values that I, I, I have in this slide are uh, values for European countries and uh, uh, values uh, before uh, COVID-19. So the, the, the scenario is worse uh, uh, nowadays. And besides that, as, uh, as you know, uh, the construction sector consumes a significant amount of raw materials and uh, it's uh, responsible for more than 30% of the world greenhouse gas uh, emissions. So because of that, and uh, to address these uh, um, key uh, issues related to productivity, to uh, uh, efficiency, to sustainability, uh, resilience, uh, we proposed uh, three years ago um, the adoption of uh, a similar strategy, um, a similar industrial digitization strategy adopted by the manufacturing sector but in this case for construction. And we call it as uh, construction 4.0. So basically construction 4.0 is about the use of uh, digital technologies and digital tools, uh, advanced materials, uh, big data sensors and, uh, and automation to have a significant impact uh, on the, uh, the production site, but also to make uh, uh, the supply chain more resilient uh, to minimize the environmental impact uh, of the construction activities, and also to uh, increase uh, the communication and uh, the engagement uh, of all uh, stake, uh, stakeholders. Of course, that uh, additive manufacturing is uh, a key enabling technology um, of uh, construction 4.0. According to the ASTM Standards Committee, um, additive manufacturing comprises uh, seven uh, different groups of technologies, uh, depending on the materials and also the, the principle used to create uh, three-dimensional parts. Among these uh, seven uh, uh, different uh, additive manufacturing uh, technologies, four of them are relevant to the construction sector, and uh, three have been uh, uh, widely um, explored. Again, three years ago, we published uh, uh, this, uh, this table, uh, which uh, uh, summarizes the key technologies, the key 3D printing technologies for construction uh, and the main materials, um, listing also the, the, on that time, the most uh, active um, universities, uh, research centers and institutes and also companies in the, in the world. In the case of uh, the Singapore Center for 3D Printing, we are focusing essentially on uh, extrusion-based process. We are designing and developing new printing ads, uh, uh, new printing strategies, uh, new materials, uh, um, developing case studies in partnership with, uh, with companies and focusing also on uh, the commercialization uh, aspect uh, associated with our, with our research. And I'm going to give you one or two uh, examples of, um, of, uh, of it. Well, let me start uh, showing some of our research, uh, research work. And uh, the first one uh, um, is related to um, a system that we develop uh, to create uh, uh, curved concrete surfaces. Uh, so we develop a, a new setup uh, uh, based on a, a robotic system 
uh, uh, a set of uh, pins, movable pins, and uh, a flexible membrane. And by controlling the position of these uh, of these pins, we were able to control the the shape of the of the membrane on top of which uh, we printed uh, uh, the concrete material. And uh, we use this uh, uh, setup uh, uh, to print for the first time uh, uh, saddle and dome shaped uh, uh, concrete surfaces as you can see uh, in, this, uh, in this slide. We use uh, numerical modeling uh, to optimize uh, uh, the, printing, uh, the printing part. Um, we use also numerical modeling to identify the most suitable materials for the uh, uh, flexible uh, membrane. And in terms of control, the control was uh, relatively more complex uh, because uh, um, requires not only to control the movement of the printing, uh, the printing system and the robotic uh, system uh, to print the concrete material, but also to control the position of the, of the pins deforming the, the, the membrane. So for that uh, uh, um, case, we, we use a PLI uh, file format which is uh, uh, commonly used for 3D scanning uh, applications. And then we converted the information into uh, a point cloud um, corresponding to the different, uh, different pins. And we use this information not only to design the, 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 the movable pin system, but also to simulate the deformation of the, um, of the membrane. Um, we use also uh, uh, um, multiple robots um, um, synchronized robots uh, to create uh, large uh, concrete uh, uh, printing structures. And uh, this video uh, uh, shows that uh, that work. So this is a team of robots uh, working in a synchronized uh, uh, way. They are not collaborative robots. This is something that we are uh, developing uh, right, uh, right now. A good example of, um, of our work, uh, and um, this attracted lots of uh, media attention, was the use of 3D printing uh, to create a prefabricated uh, bathroom unit. I'm going to show you the, the, the video. <laughs> This year, we completed the, the certification of this uh, um, 3D printed uh, prefabricated bathroom unit. And we are now finishing the discussions with um, a Singaporean company for the commercialization of these, uh, of these uh, uh, PBUs. We, we conducted also a, a study uh, to investigate uh, uh, the economic uh, costs, uh, environmental impact and, uh, and productivity associated with, uh, with the fabrication of the, the prefabricated uh, uh, bathroom unit, considering uh, two fabrication approaches. So one was, uh, of course, uh, 3D printing, and the other one was, uh, was uh, uh, precast. Uh, for this study, we use uh, ISO, the ISO 14040 uh, uh, for the environmental assessment. Uh, we use ECHO indicators 99. Um, the impact uh, associated with climate change uh, was uh, investigated using the IPCC 2007 
uh, with the time frame of uh, uh, 100 years, and uh, energy consumption was calculated using uh, uh, cumulative energy uh, demand uh, method. Um, this uh, um, uh, slide shows the dimensions of the, um, of the prefabricated bathroom uh, unit. Uh, for the precast, we use uh, uh, standard materials. For the 3D printing, uh, we use a proprietary material. Uh, I cannot provide uh, uh, too much detail about the materials because uh, uh, due to commercialization issues, but uh, roughly uh, considered of um, ordinary Portland cement, fly ash, uh, silica fume, and, uh, and sand. And in both cases, uh, uh, 3D printing and precast, uh, we use the same uh, type of uh, supporting, uh, supporting slab. Um, the, pre the, the precast uh, uh, PBU was uh, fabricated by our industrial partner, uh, Simcorp, and uh, we were responsible for the uh, 3D printed uh, uh, PBU. For the 3D printed uh, uh, PBU, and because the, the, the PBU uh, is a non-structural part, so this means that the walls are not uh, um, load-bearing. We designed the, the walls uh, using uh, a kind of lattice structure, um, and these allow us to reduce in 30% uh, uh, the overall weight uh, of, the, um, of the PBU. Uh, besides that, uh, we realized that uh, by using uh, uh, 3D printing, it was possible to reduce the overall cost uh, in uh, 34%. Uh, this was essentially due to a significant uh, reduction uh, on the material costs. Um, in both cases, uh, uh, we observed a, a similar indirect cost. In the case of, uh, of 3D printing, we were able to reduce the labor costs in around 40%, but it was necessary to invest a significant amount of money on the 3D printing uh, uh, component. And that's why we obtain a, a similar indirect, uh, indirect uh, costs uh, in both uh, uh, strategies. Uh, by using uh, 3D printing, uh, we were able to reduce uh, in uh, around six, or 86% uh, the CO2 emissions and uh, in around 87% uh, the energy consumption. And related to the CO2 emissions, uh, the most significant contribution in, in the case of 3D printing was uh, related to electricity related CO2 emissions, while in the case of the precast uh, was essentially due to the, the use of the form, uh, the form work. Uh, using uh, Echo Indicators uh, 99 uh, um, show that uh, the uh, 3D printing strategy uh, causes less damage to human health, uh, to the ecosystem quality and, uh, and resources. And by using 3D printing, we were able to significantly mitigate uh, some of the major problems associated with the precast uh, uh, strategy, which are related to uh, respiratory inorganics due to metal scraps, uh, particulates, uh, also some carcinogenic uh, uh, elements, and also fossil fuels. So 3D printing is clear. Uh, 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 an ideal technology to uh, reduce the environmental impact uh, uh, associated with, uh, with construction. Well, as I mentioned, um, our um, activities are essentially based on um, uh, extrusion-based uh, based process. And uh, one of the problems that we have in extrusion is uh, the relatively weak uh, interlayer bone strength. Um, and this causes, of course, uh, uh, strong uh, anisotropy with uh, a significant impact uh, on the overall mechanical properties and, uh, and uh, acoustic, uh, acoustic properties. Um, there are different methods that can be, can be used and different methods that have been uh, proposed to address this, uh, this uh, uh, problem, mechanical methods, chemical methods, but uh, all of them are quite difficult to be automatized. Uh, so we decided to focus on a, a simple uh, bonding agent uh, uh, strategy. And uh, in that case, uh, uh, the key aspects uh, to be considered was to um, develop a, an automatic uh, strategy to uh, print the bonding agent and to control the amount of bonding agent. Uh, in 3D printing, this is relatively simple because um, we can use, for example, two printing heads, one printing head, 
to print the concrete material and another printing edge to print the bonding agent. But uh, um, this requires very complex control systems. So we decided to do something different. And uh, uh, we decided to uh, develop a new printing head, um, which is uh, uh, composed of a, a rotatable nozzle with uh, two outputs, uh, one concrete output and one bonding agent uh, output, and also uh, a flow uh, splitter to uh, guarantee a stable um, a flow rate. Uh, this uh, uh, new printing head can be operated in two uh, different modes. In the first mode uh, uh, represented uh, uh, by this uh, scheme A, the uh, bonding agent uh, um, outlet is uh, behind the, the, concrete, uh, the concrete outlet. So this means that the bonding agent is uh, printed uh, on the top surface of the previously printed uh, uh, concrete. Uh, in this case, because there is a time gap between uh, printing the concrete and uh, uh, printing the bonding agent, depending on the cases, uh, this may affect uh, the bonding uh, uh, efficacy. Uh, the second operation, or in the second operation uh, uh, mode, the uh, bonding agent uh, outlet is uh, in front of the uh, concrete uh, outlet. Um, in this case, if there is a, a, an offset uh, between the new layer and the previous layer, the bonding a, uh, agent must be um, printed outside the part without any uh, bonding effect. So we need to uh, decide about the best uh, uh, operation mode, depending, uh, first of all, on the characteristics of the bonding agent and also on the um, geometry of the parts to be, to be uh, printed. This is a, um, an image showing the, uh, the physical uh, uh, printing head um, with, uh, with the two operation modes, as I, as I mentioned. But we had also another problem related to uh, um, extrusion and extrusion, the bonding uh, agent uh, uh, material, which was related to um, the distribution of the, the bonding material um, in, at the interface between the two uh, concrete, uh, uh, concrete layers uh, due to the high viscosity of the, um, of the, the bonding agent. Of course, that, uh, we can take advantage of the pressure uh, uh, produced by the upper uh, concrete, uh, concrete layer, but nevertheless, uh, uh, we observe uh, a significant uh, number of, uh, of defects. So we solved this, uh, this issue by considering a, a spreader. And again, depending on the operation, uh, on the operation mode, we position the, the spreader in the right place. In the case of the first operation mode, uh, the spreader uh, is attached uh, behind uh, uh, the bonding agent uh, uh, outlet, while in the case of the second operation mode, where the bonding agent uh, outlet is in front of the concrete outlet, we attached uh, the, the spreader uh, between uh, both uh, outlets. And these images uh, show uh, um, the two different uh, uh, configurations. We, we tested these uh, uh, printing ads uh, um, using a range of, uh, a range of materials. Uh, we consider four different uh, uh, bonding, uh, bonding agents, um, simple water, uh, a cement strengthener, uh, polymer solution, and, uh, and a cement paste. And uh, uh, in all cases, uh, the concrete material was uh, consisted on uh, uh, ordinary Portland cement, flash, uh, uh, silica fume, uh, uh, silica sand, water, and, uh, and PVA uh, uh, fibers. And uh, what we observed was that uh, um, the best uh, 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 results were obtained uh, uh, by using, uh, of course, the feather because we minimize the internal defects and also by using uh, a, cement, uh, a cement paste, which allow us to significantly increase the um, uh, interlayer bond, uh, bond strength. Um, and this is clear in this graph where we compare uh, the, the bond strength uh, with the reference and uh, the reference is a simple uh, uh, 3D printed uh, structure without any bonding uh, uh, agent. Well, another problem that we have uh, in uh, uh, 3D printing uh, is uh, related to the layer by layer fabrication approach. Um, and uh, in the case of uh, curved surfaces, 
this uh, generates uh, uh, a common problem uh, called by the, the staircase effect. We can uh, minimize this problem by reducing the layer thickness, but uh, this significantly increase the production time. Uh, or another alternative is to use a kind of uh, adaptive uh, slicing uh, approach, um, which means that we need to deal uh, with uh, layers of different thickness. And uh, this requires a very complex uh, uh, control system because we need to adjust the process, the, the printing parameters per layer. And in some cases, this is uh, uh, totally impossible. Uh, in some technologies, for example, VET photopolymerization, this is totally impossible. Uh, so we decided to address this, uh, this issue again by designing uh, a new uh, printing head, um, a printing head with uh, a variable geometry nozzle uh, with uh, the outlet uh, uh, shape uh, adjusted um, according to uh, each, uh, each, uh, each layer. We achieved this uh, by using uh, multiple sliding plates uh, uh, on the, the different sides of the, of the outlet. Uh, and uh, these two images shows the, the, um, the printing head, this uh, uh, adaptive geometry uh, printed head, um, top view and, uh, and the bottom view. And uh, uh, this figure shows the, the printing head mounted on, the, on our KUKA, Kuka uh, uh, robot. We of course tested this uh, this printing head, and uh, um, yeah, the control system was quite uh, quite uh, quite complex um, because it was not uh, uh, only necessary to control the the movement of the of the robot, uh, the printing conditions, but it was also necessary to adjust the geometry of the outlet uh, uh, before we start printing a new a new a new layer. We develop a, 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 a control. Uh, uh, software using uh, using uh, using matlab but this was uh, one of the most difficult uh, uh, parts of this uh, of this uh, of this project we tested the the, the printing head and uh, um, this slide shows some uh, some of the results uh, um, using uh, um, our uh, new printing head with a with a, a, a variable geometry and a standard pin printing head. And uh, as you can see with this printing head, we were not only able to uh, significantly reduce uh, uh, the, the, the staircase effect, uh, we practically eliminate the staircase effect, but it was also possible to significantly reduce the surface, uh, the surface uh, uh, roughness. Well, another uh, um, area where um, the Singapore Center for 3D Printing is doing uh, uh, research is uh, related to modeling and simulation. Um, in order to have a, a, a platform to test new materials and also um, um, new printing heads and for process uh, uh, optimization. Um, we are including also um, relatively complex uh, mathematical, nonlinear mathematical models to describe the rheological properties of our, of our materials. And uh, uh, all of these uh, models are being solved using or abacus in some cases or uh, fluent in, uh, in, other, in other cases. Um, we validated the, 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 the models. And uh, as you can see on the right side of this, uh, of this slide, we were able to obtain a, a, very, good, a very good correlation between uh, numerical and uh, experimental, experimental results. We are using also uh, molding and simulation uh, to predict internal defects, um, uh, as uh, as shown in this uh, in this slide. So this uh, uh, corresponds to um, a simulation uh, considering uh, 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 multiple printing layers um, using different uh, uh, nozzle configurations. Um, and uh, as you can see uh, again, uh, there is a, a high agreement between. Uh, predicted results and uh, experimental results, uh, even if we consider, for example, uh, circular nozzles uh, uh, and uh, not really optimized processing conditions, uh, which create uh, significant uh, internal uh, defects. Uh, these numerical models are, uh, are critical for, for us. Uh, uh, they are a central part of uh, um, something bigger that we are trying to develop uh, 
uh, again, it's something similar to what we have done uh, um, for other additive manufacturing technologies uh, um, in the scope of Industry 4.0, which is uh, uh, related to the concept of digital twins. Uh, but in this case, uh, we um, are not only focusing on uh, the fabrication process, but the idea is to integrate aspects related to the design of the, the construction element, uh, inspection and, uh, and evaluation um, using uh, multiple digital tools, um, finite element uh, analysis, uh, uh, data analytics, uh, artificial intelligence um, to support uh, decision, decision uh, uh, making. So this is uh, um, a very important and significant uh, um, area uh, at the Singapore Center for uh, 3D, uh, 3D printing. I mentioned that we are developing a, a range of case studies with, uh, with companies. Uh, this is uh, uh, one example. Um, it was a, a reception table that we printed for uh, a Singaporean company, uh, Team Build. Um, this is uh, uh, another one. Uh, this is a, a concrete tree uh, that we printed for the NTU convocation, uh, the 2020 uh, uh, convocation. And um, this is a, a, a decoration a spiral vase, um, also with a relatively complex, uh, uh, complex uh, geometry, and we printed it with uh, uh, recycled waste. Materials uh, uh, represent also uh, uh, an important, uh, an important area, uh, not only for for construction, but. Uh, um, a very important uh, uh, aspect of our activities uh, in all uh, research pillars and uh, material certification is, for example, uh, uh, a relevant activity at, uh, at the center. Um, this, uh, this image shows uh, the most commonly used materials for, for concrete, uh, concrete printing. Uh, in the case of the center and similar to other, to other research centers, uh, we develop uh, um, 3D printable gel polymer uh, mortars. Uh, um, we, are, we are using uh, uh, magnesium silicate uh, binders. So a range of, uh, a range of, uh, of materials, in most cases, uh, proprietary materials, uh, materials that we are exploiting with companies for future uh, commercialization. Um, Um, in terms of, uh, of materials and uh, uh, considering uh, sustainability issues, we are also using uh, recycled glass as uh, aggregates uh, in 3D uh, concrete printing. And we have a, a, a partnership with uh, uh, NIRIA, uh, a Water and uh, Environmental Institute here in, uh, in NTU, um, to use uh, uh, a new sand. So the project was called New Sand and uh, focus on the, 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 the fabrication or the production of uh, uh, a new sand uh, using two approaches. Um, one was uh, new sand uh, developed from uh, treated uh, incineration bottom ash, uh, which is now being uh, uh, explored for road construction projects. Uh, and uh, the second uh, uh, route was uh, uh, using uh, uh, municipal solid waste. Um, and uh, this was the approach that we, uh, that we explored um, as a, a new scent to incorporate in our uh, concrete, uh, concrete materials. And again, we demonstrated the, the viability of using these, uh, these new sand with a range of, uh, range of products. And again, this is something that we are discussing with uh, uh, a local Singaporean company to further uh, develop. I'm very sorry, there is a, a problem in uh, controlling the, the computer. Okay, yeah. Um, well, also in terms of uh, in terms of materials, and this this was a project that um, that I had with um, with colleagues uh, at Penn State uh, and uh, uh, at the Polytechnic Institute of uh, of Leria. We tried to develop a strategy to create uh, functional graded materials. Um, Basically, the, the initial idea was uh, uh, to develop a strategy uh, to print these uh, functional graded materials 
allowing in real time to change the, 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 the concrete composition to reduce the amount of uh, uh, concrete in uh, low uh, loaded areas uh, and uh, replace concrete by a mixture of uh, concrete uh, with uh, cork or expanded clay. Um, and these were the initial, the initial materials. So again, we develop a, a, a software tool uh, to design uh, uh, those, uh, those components. Uh, we develop a material library, which was fundamental um, to support uh, uh, the, software, the software tool. And, uh, and then we develop a new printing head to allow us to create these uh, functional graded structures. And by functional graded structure, I mean uh, 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 a structure where the composition varies in a continued uh, uh, um, way. Uh, this uh, image shows uh, an example of uh, one of uh, one of those structures. So it was uh, uh, a structure where we start printed uh, using uh, uh, only concrete and. Uh, uh, we hand it uh, with uh, uh, concrete uh, containing uh, uh, 10 and, uh, and later we increase to 20% by, 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 by volume um, of, um, of, uh, of cork. It is possible to reach uh, high values. The only limitation that we had was the pumps. Uh, so we need to invest more money to uh, improve the printing, uh, the printing capabilities, but uh, we can increase uh, increase the amount of, uh, of uh, uh, cork added to the concrete, uh, the concrete material. Uh, more expensive pumps are, are required because uh, by increasing cork, uh, we increase uh, uh, significantly the, the, the viscosity of the, of the materials. But we are trying to uh, uh, design these printing materials uh, in a proper way because uh, again, uh, um, uh, the materials for extrusion uh, uh, based process they must uh, present uh, a shear thinning uh, behavior, which means that uh, the viscosity decreases by increasing the, the, strain, uh, the strain rate. And this is uh, uh, the, the, always the starting point when we develop uh, new materials for uh, concrete, uh, uh, concrete printing. Uh, this is a, a, an image J uh, showing the, the cork distribution. And uh, as you can see with, uh, with our new uh, uh, printing ad, it was uh, uh, possible to have a very good control over the, the, the distribution of, uh, of, uh, of cork uh, along the printed, uh, the printed uh, uh, structure. And again, uh, we uh, consider different sections. And uh, as you can see, again, uh, very well-defined distribution of, uh, of cork uh, in, um, in the, 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 printed, uh, the printed structure. The advantage of, uh, of, uh, of cork, and uh, we, we use, um, so this was a, a collaboration with uh, uh, Curticera Amorí, a company in, uh, in Portugal, and uh, basically we use uh, um, very poor quality, uh, quality cork. Uh, uh, but uh, the relevance of using cork was not only because we were able to reduce the amount of, uh, of cement, uh, reducing the, the, the CO2 footprint, but also to improve the thermal performance of the construction, the construction elements. And uh, we, we simulated that, um, um, but before that, uh, let me show you some uh, scanning electron microscopy images of, uh, of uh, parts of our printed structure. So this is uh, uh, some cork uh, uh, particles embedded in a, in a cement paste. And as you can see, even after printing, uh, we keep the honeycomb structure of, uh, of cork. Uh, we tested other, other materials like uh, bezel fiber. So we are exploiting a, a range of uh, uh, materials for uh, concrete, uh, concrete printing. As I mentioned, the advantage of cork uh, was uh, to improve the thermal performance of our construction, uh, uh, construction elements. And uh, uh, we perform a, a simulation study using the Ecotech analysis software uh, from uh, uh, Autodesk, considering uh, a standard room. Um, and uh, we uh, investigate uh, the energy consumption to keep uh, that room at um, a stable temperature throughout the year. And uh, um, we consider two different cities. So we, we perform this study considering uh, a room in Lisbon and uh, another one in uh, Manchester in the UK. I was in, uh, in Manchester on that, uh, on that time. And as you can see, 
by using uh, uh, a combination of concrete and, uh, and, uh, and cork, uh, it is possible to reduce in uh, for more than 43% the energy consumption to keep the temperature more or less uh, constant. While in the case of, uh, of Manchester, the use of uh, uh, concrete and cork allow us again to reduce the energy consumption in around uh, 40%. Uh, Finally, and I'm not going to, to give too much details because uh, we are still finalizing this, uh, this project. Uh, this was uh, something uh, uh, that I started in, in, in Manchester and um, uh, it was uh, focusing on uh, uh, reusing material from uh, uh, the demolition of, uh, of, uh, of buildings. This is, uh, this is a, a critical problem in UK. It's also a major problem in, uh, in, uh, in Europe. So only in UK, um, around uh, 50,000 buildings are demolished by, by here. And uh, uh, this process generates more than 400 million tons uh, also per, per year. So as part of this, uh, this project funded by EPSRC, a project called uh, Rebuild, we were looking to strategies to reuse uh, some of this material uh, incorporating in our in our three D printing uh, uh, materials to create new construction construction uh, elements, but also because we are mechanical engineers, um, one of uh, uh, another important activity as part of this uh, rebuild uh, project was also to start redesigning buildings, considering uh, uh, um, future the construction and uh, introducing green manufacturing uh, uh, aspects into the building uh, into the building design and uh, with this i finish my my presentation i know that it's morning in uh, in portugal but uh, here it's the the beginning of the of the night and